Hi, Rich Pisano here from Digitally Feelers, and this is number 28 in my Powerful Tools of Affinity series. And you can see the link to the whole series in the description below. Almost everything on this page was created with just strokes. So today I'm going into the settings of the stroke to show you all the effects you can make. But before I do, please click that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And let's get started. So the first one I'm going to show you is dots. This one is just basically a rectangle and I gave it a stroke of dots. So how did I get those dots? So what I did here was I opened my stroke panel and what I did was I, here's my settings and I want to make sure, and I'll do another one for you right in front of you, but I have the caps on curve. Since I have no fill on this rectangle, these shouldn't matter very much. So I'll show you what I could do here later. But what I'm doing here, which is the most important, is this, where my strokes go. And I have them also scaled with objects so I can move them around afterwards. So for example, I have 0, 2, 0, 0. So if I change this from 2, say, to 4, and then see what happens, it spaces them more. So, and the size of, so you, this number right here spaces them, like there's a lot of space between this right here. And I don't know if I change this one, if it'll affect it. Let's try. I'm just playing as we go along here. Let's say we did this one as a two. So these basically are telling you where the spaces are going with the dots. So let me put this back to zero. And go back to where we were and put this one back to two. Just like that. Now, how do we get the size of the dot? Well, the size of the dot, this is a 10, almost a 10 point thing. You just increase this size and the dot gets bigger. Once you decide the size of your dot, I advise you to go in there and say scale with object because if you don't, it'll change things. So now when you move these down, it shrinks the circles or increases the circles. So it keeps them in proportion. Whereas if you didn't have the scale with object and you moved them down, the circles would get bigger and bigger. Or I should say the circles stay the same size even though your, your rectangle is smaller. So let's uh, close that one out. In fact, I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to the next one is the yellow dots. I'm going to the yellow dots. Basically, the yellow dots is exactly what I told you before. I took a line, just a stroke. I didn't do a rectangle this time, and I went across. So on that stroke, what I could do is I'll turn it to a yellow color. Uh, we give it a size and then we go to the dash column. And for some reason, I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. So what happened there is I had it, must have had different settings. There's the middle one, which is butt cap, and I don't care about that. But the cap, I want to be round. And if the cap is round, then they become circles. And you can make them as large as you want and space them as far as you want. And the nice thing about it is then you can go to your node tool and make them as many as you want. And you can bring them around wherever you want. So you can make some cool effects that way. So that's how, you, that's how I got that one. I'm going to delete that now. Hide this one. And then I did this one. And this one's a little different. I almost did it the same way, so let's try again. Let's do this time a rectangle. And in that rectangle, I'm making these very small, something like that. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to fill. So the reason I'll, I'll show you why in a minute, I'll fill it with white. But if you want to see how this works, I'll just give it a color just for now like that. And here's a, something in here. Let's see which one we're talking about. We want to see here behind or in front. Let's see. That one puts it behind. So you see it behind here like that. And this one puts it in front. So what I did was I went one step further. What I did, I just made this no fill or white fill. I'm sorry. I did a white fill. And then I went into the F effects panel and added another outer, an, another outline to it. And I added it in black. And as you add it, it doesn't go around the whole circle. What it does is it 
follows the rectangle and goes out, which I think is pretty cool. So that's one way, but then you can do the opposite way, I think. Put it behind. Let me see. This way. So you can have it in front, which just like that, or you can have it behind, which kind of gives it a little bit of a scallops look. So you could do kind of something like that. And remember, you can space them differently. Like here, if I want these to be really large, which I don't really want them, but if I want to just put one here, let's see how that works. And I just play around. And then you have more of a scallop look. They're right next to each other. See how cool that looks? So you can do some cool things. You could do that on a circle or whatever. And if I want that to be on the inside to show like that, and I want to space them more, I can kind of do a marquee, I think. Wait, hold on, let me see. Let's do, uh, let's do two again. And it spaces them more. And like this one right here, when I got it to, to the right with exactly what I wanted, then I could, and I did scale, so it scales up with it. So now, let's delete this one. So now I can make this kind of a Broadway marquee if I want. This one here is exactly what I showed you. I did a scallops again, and this time I did it on the inside. Basically, I'm changing an alignment. So here I have aligned on the inside of this rectangle. And here I can put alignment stroke to center, and that puts the dots on the center like that. So what I did here is I moved it on the inside, but if I go like this, let's see what happens. Now I have scallops on the outside. So still they're round caps, basically round circles, and I went from inside to outside on a rectangle. Next I did a dolphin one. I thought this was kind of cool. So I opened this one up. I should be able to see it, and I don't see it. Why? Oh, there we go. So I opened this dolphin one up, and really the only thing that's not, <laughs> that's not a stroke is this dolphin, because if you look at this, all I did was pull these out. I just made a row right next to each other. Once again, what I did with the stroke, this time, it's again, it's round caps. We'll, we'll, turn, we'll go into squares in a minute. It's round caps. I went aligned. Let's see if I change my alignment and what happens. Nothing on the alignment because it's not a rectangle. And same with the orientation. Nothing on the orientation. But what I did was I only put a 1. And if you use a 1, they're basically touching each other because there's almost no space in between. And that all depended on the size. I used a 39 here. But it depended on, look at that, how cool. So what I did was I made these circles. And I gave it also an outline, by the way. Even I, gave, I didn't have to. I could turn the outline off. But since I wanted to put them one on top of another, I wanted to see kind of like the, like the new scoop. I shouldn't say. Like some of the new artwork that's being done with simplicity like this. So I wanted to put a little bit of an outline with a bluish color to it. And that basically looks like waves. Then I found this dolphin on Unsplash and just put them in between the waves, looking like he's jumping out. So I thought that was cool. Well, I know these are basics, but I'm just trying to give you ideas of what things you can do. So let's try something else. Let's go to uh, squares, which I thought was interesting. This is squares now. And I got this square in a different way. I got the square. Instead of the circles, I went to this where it says square cap. And it does exactly the same thing. I just put a fill in the middle. If I don't want to fill, I can just cut that right off and leave it, and it's just squares. If you have a fill, then the outline only goes around the edge. Then there's no lines in here, and the outline's on the outside, but if you get rid of the outline, then, then the squares are totally showing here. But let's put the outline back on, and then you get rid of the color. There's so many combinations, which is so cool. Get rid of the color inside, and then the outline fills all the squares. So that was pretty cool. And then you could do something else, which I thought was really interesting, is this one, which is a butt cap. And it, what it created was lines. And I thought, whoa, I, I didn't expect that at all. So you know, let me pull out a little bit. And so you just basically have dashes. I think I did another one here. So dashes. 
you can do the full dash or once again you can go on the outside or dashes on the inside I think that's the outside so let's see how I did that one why is that stroke saying it I think the color doesn't even matter of the stroke because it's just dashes so you could change this to any color you want it won't affect the stroke okay next here's one that I thought an idea for it if you wanted to do a children's book when you're doing creating children's things you could do connected dots now this is a bad image I just took a screenshot let's go to where this is where I created it and really what I just did was let me turn these off so I took this duck and then I took the same duck here that's the original I got it on unsplash and I get I put a mask on it and what the mask shows why is it not showing there we go what the mask what I did with the mask is I painted out the duck so that's the mask everything and I wanted to leave some features because if it's a young kid a lot of times in these connected dots they need some extra stuff to show them and they need it simplified I also just do with a paintbrush this wing and all I did was follow this I just went like this with a paintbrush and then when I was done with that I just remember the dots I just basically drew around here with the pen tool and I could show you what I mean in a second I'll, in fact I'll do a quick one right now undo that I just basically took this pen tool and I went just like this I went one two just like I showed you earlier let's make that smaller first of all really small and I, I just went like this and I'm not going to do the whole thing but that's what I did and then I went to I just moved these around just what I thought would look good and then let's just leave it at that for now we we have to change it after we see what the dots look like once again I went to dashes and then round and I decided how big the dots have to be and if there were too many or spaced wrong instead of five spaces I could do three spaces that's too many it depends on how big you wanted the dots so say eight spaces see everything changes like that so that's how I did that and let me just get rid of that right now and what I ended up doing is these are how I place my dots and then I just one by one I right here I added the numbers underneath and don't forget to get rid of the original duck and there you have it so that's just um, follow the dots so you can make a children's book um, I'm thinking you can do a lot of effects with this one thing you need to know is once you've created this you don't want all these dots to move afterwards so I would advise once you know the exact size then all you do is let's say you don't let's keep the original you don't want to ruin what you have here let's group all this and then you duplicate it control or command J and then you do rasterize and once you have rasterized it it's a pixel document you shouldn't enlarge it anymore after that but now it's still exactly where you want it and you can move it all around and do things with it as one piece and you're not screwing up any of your dots so it's kind of a little weird tutorial and you are the creative people and I'm sure you can come up with creative ways to use these dots and dashes and all this other stuff I just barely touched on this so I hope you like this tutorial please click like and subscribe and have a great day thank you bye